Cynics on Disney podcast contains adult language. Listener discretion is advised. This is the Cynics on Disney podcast, presented by Nightclub33.com. Welcome to this week's episode of the Cynics on Universal podcast. I'm your host, Bobby, a.k.a. the Universal Cynic. <laughs> I'm Amanda, a.k.a. the Anti-Cynic. <laughs> Today, no, we seriously, you didn't hear that wrong. Uh, no, this is not an experimental spinoff show or anything like that. Mm-mm, not, not doing it. However, um, this is, I think, a groundbreaking episode for us, you guys. And for us, yeah. Because, look, I am still technically a universal virgin. Like I've dipped my toe in the water here and there. I stayed a night there, or two nights. Yeah. Ago. Uh, for the that one time that we got you know swept away in the hurricane and whatnot, um, and, and we've been to City Walk together right. before, and I've accidentally turned into the parking garage over there like three times. So <laughs> it's um, easy to do, <laughs> really is. Um, so I, I'm my virginity is still intact as far as I'm yeah. concerned, though. Um, however, someone popped her cherry recently. Actually, this is my second time at Universal. What? I went when I was like 12. Oh, oh my God. So I don't don't, don't, like, I don't remember anything. I thought I married someone who was pure, but it's fine. It's fine. (laughs) Uh, I, I, I I guess we'll, we'll have to get over it together. This is going to take some therapy is what. Oh, is it? Is it going to mean we're going to need some marriage counseling? Yes, absolutely. Um, Yeah, well, this is what happens. But, you know, for all the hubbub on the Disney fan sites and Facebook groups and Twitter, Mm -hmm. X, X, X going to give it to you. Um, (laughs) I I think a a, a lot of the sentiment is that people want to try Universal because they're burnt out on on Disney. Now, that is not the reason why you... Pop your secondary cherry. Secondary? I mean, I don't remember anything from my my trip when I was like twelve, and of course, it's not the same at all. Okay, but well, certainly that you know what you're, you're way more experienced than I am at it. So we are going to actually talk about Universal Studios because we finally have someone on the show who can give a personal experience. Yeah. So yeah, we do. And that would be the anti cynic over here. So, right. What are you cheering about, kids? You you wouldn't like like ninety percent <laughs> of the rides. Shut up. Ah, uh, it depends on how old they are. <laughs> Fair. So, all right. The, we we should relay the full story. I guess you are a yeah. t- teacher down here. Uh, yes. It is a common thing for graduating from a particular type of school. To take those mm-hmm. uh, pending graduates to uh, one of the theme parks. Mm-hmm. Some do Universal, some do Disney. Yours chose to do Universal. Um, well, Disney doesn't really offer anything anymore. Um, ah, okay, so, so that, Universal that is the, the only theme one. park. Universal is the only theme park that. For for the record, I am a middle school teacher, um, and i I teach eighth grade. Um. So I'm slightly insane. <laughs> Already. Truer words. Truer words have never been spoken. On this um, because eighth grade is honestly my favorite age group to teach. I love them. Um, I'm but, psychopath. <laughs> but it is very common here in you know the central Florida area. And even in like, I know I've got a friend who teaches in South Georgia. Um, who's coming down, I think, this weekend for, for Gradventure. Um, but it's very common for the schools in this area um, to do Gradventure for the graduating eighth graders. Because that's what this is. This is only for eighth graders. Gradventure, nobody oh. else. Um, yeah, seniors get their own. Seniors. Okay. seniors have their own. It's called Grad Bash. Um, and oh. that's just for seniors. <laughs> they get their oh. own. Um, and then the grad venture nights are just for eighth graders. Um, so I volunteered 
very enthusiastically volunteered multiple times. Every time an email was sent out asking for volunteers, I was probably the first one that replied back. Um, Volunteering to chaperone this event (laughs) with the eighth graders that I teach. Um, Again, psychopath. Um, I (laughs) could never, would never, could not ever, nah, absolutely not. Um, You know, so she's, she's not a hero hero. Like, you know, like a, she she didn't go to a war but she is fighting a different ki- type of fight so uh kudos to you <laughs> Amanda. now if i may take the reins just a little here on this okay. uh, i have lots of questions none of which sure i've you. asked um you have not since you got back and, and the reason you why is because i wanted i wanted to save it for this episode uh Great. so that we can get all milk all the content out of it get my genuine yeah. reaction to things uh and see if that would encourage me to drop those extra few pounds that I want to drop so that I could actually get on uh, these attractions sometimes. So okay, let's start with this. Okay. Which one did you visit? Because there's two. We did both. Right? We did both and we had access to both. You had access to both. Okay. Did you so go to did, both theme yes. parks? Yes. I went to, they had a special walkway and everything just for, for us to oh. get between the parks. Oh, yeah, mainly so we didn't have to worry about eighth graders trying to sneak off is really what that was. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> but yeah, we had like our own little special because you have you also have to understand this was a special ticketed event. They closed the park at six o'clock to the general public. Um, We could get there as early as four. We were there at like 430. Um. And the park to the general public closed at six. So, and this thing lasted until midnight. So from. So the the answer to my question was both. Got it. Okay. Uh, And those two theme parks are, I hate to cut you off here, but you know, we don't Uh have to give every detail about this part of the trip. I got to save some time for all the rides and stuff. Cause we got news that we got to get to too. So. Yeah. Um, Sure. Okay. So you let's start off with the OG. Universal theme park, mm-hmm. the one that everybody saw on Nickelodeon, along with right. apparently, uh, you know, using a blind eye to a bunch of other shit, according to the right. documentaries and stuff. Uh, but right. we all saw that Universal logo, and mm-hmm. I I saw that in person when we went to to go to City Walk, uh, right? And I was so underwhelmed by it, right? You I know, actually didn't uh, see it on this trip. So this would be to me the equivalent of the castle. That magic yeah. kingdom, would it not? It's I mean, I guess. Is this what people there's, feel like walking into that California one? I don't know, but there's not really a I don't I mean I can't think of like what would be considered the quote unquote landmark icon or the icon of the park. Because we didn't I didn't see the universal sign at all when we were there. Well, maybe it was because of your specialty walkway. I don't know. Um, you know, but we'll we'll still try Let's chalk that up as a thing, I guess, in Magic Kingdom's favor. Uh, I guess, you know, yeah. Or all the parks uh, at Disney. Yeah, because really. they have like the icon that you can see from like all you know anywhere in the park. And pretty much. And, and not for nothing, they are actually iconic. So yep. it, you know yeah. there is that. Um, okay, so <sighs> I know v- very little about Universal in the way that mm-hmm. their parks are set up, in the way mm-hmm. that they're. Um, theming occurs and and so on and so forth um so i guess my first question uh is is it comparable more to like a magic kingdom type thing where they have like seven different lands and it's a hub and spoke thing or is it more like an animal kingdom thing like how how would you describe the setup i i kind of see it more um as kind of like Hollywood studios. Um, and that mean that may be an on the nose comparison because they're both theme parks no. that have to do with like movies. Really? I think I think Universal did a better job at their theming for, not gonna lie. Okay. Um what made it better then? Because it's actually a coherent theming. <laughs> 
So this is where I, I'm I'm a little bit on the fence with. Okay. Um, what? Okay. At the what are the the lands? I guess you want to. So call them, I mean, I guess you could call them lands. Like you have like the area that's supposed to be kind of like the old Hollywood, kind of like you know when you first walk into Hollywood Studios, it's very reminiscent of like of that area. Okay. They have a Simpsons area. Um, okay. they have. I'm trying to remember what because I went back and forth between both parks multiple times. So I'm trying to remember what's at what park. Um, they have. They have like this like New York. Like think of, remember like the streets of America area that used mm-hmm. to be at Hollywood Studios. Yeah, they kind of have that. Um, except it'd be more like New York than you know both New York and. San Francisco. Um, and I mean, that that's pretty much it at the OG park as okay. far as theming. Right. Everything else over at um, Islands of Adventure, that's where you have like your superheroes. They have um, a cart, like a, what they call Toon Lagoon, which is um, like the Sunday comics from when we were kids. It's like all of you know, those things are over there. Um, like Wait, they got, got family like, circus hanging out over there. Yeah. They had like a family circus and they got Popeye stuff over there. Um, you know, they've got all kinds of things over there. They have the, that's where the Jurassic park um, area is, is over at islands of adventure, the Harry Potter. I that was uh, over at the original one. Uh, I don't. Uh... Oh, no, it it's not. It's not. It's over at islands. Okay. So, um, but, and then you've got the Harry Potter in both parks. So, <sighs> but it's more so like I what, I saw what, it. Who does Harry Potter think that he is trying to be like Moana? I mean, come on. Honestly, though, like the Harry Potter stuff over at the OG park was kind of underwhelming. It's when you got over to Islands of Adventure in that area of the Harry Potter world that it was really just like um just awesome. Okay. Um. I'm going to get to Harry Potter. I don't care about it, but uh, obviously this is not just me who's asking shit. I'm sure other people might have questions. So mm-hmm. I'm going, I'm not going to just gloss over it. Although I want to, cause I, I got it. Don't care about Harry Potter. Uh, Your mom specifically asked me about Harry Potter. <laughs> I, know. I know. And that's, that's why I'm going to ask the question about it, but I, I don't want to right now. So um, instead, I want to focus on me. Um, sure. Sell me on going to these theme parks. Like, why would I want to go? And is there anything in particular that uh, like we need to see? I think you would enjoy it because a there's the, it, the feels like there's a lot more rides. There's rides for movies that you love, um, and they're more thrilling than disney like these are like legit roller coasters um at universal i mean tell that the guardians and rock and roller coaster but right i will say disney has stepped up their game in the roller coaster department but still when you've got a roller coaster that not only does it go like backwards but it stops and then it just feels like the track and all just like fall straight down with you. Okay. That, that's, you know, that sounds like vertigo, but all right, sure. We'll it's just, uh, fun. <laughs> um, all right. Well, you said more me style movies. Okay. Yeah. What movies? So you like men in black. They have the men in black attraction. They've got the return of the mummy, which you would love that ride, by the way. Um, they have the King Kong, the, um, Skull Island, whatever that is. What is it? I have it written down. Uh, the Skull Island Reign of Kong ride, which you would enjoy. Um, I think you would really enjoy the Spider-Man ride and the Transformers ride too, as well. A lot of these rides, they have a lot of like, um, 2D and 3D rides, a lot more than I was expecting them to have. Okay. So, roller coasters. But they're not. But like the the 2D and 3D rides, they're not just like the motion I'm simulators. Get to those. I, I know. I'm going to okay. get to those because I got questions. Okay. Like, relax. Relax. 
We, we I'm got trying you. to sell you. You told me to sell you. Yeah. And ease off the gas pedal there, saleswoman. That's all I'm saying. <sighs> when it comes to coasters, okay, mm-hmm. I do expect something called the Incredible Hulk or the Velosa Coaster um, to, to be more thrilling than what Disney could offer. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but on the whole, would you say that Universal's coasters are better? Or would you still prefer that of Disney's? Unfortunately, I ran out of time before getting to ride the Hulk, which disappointed me because I was really looking forward to that one. Well, Um, I favorite Avenger, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) Um, I will admit that I chickened out once I saw the Lost (laughs) Coaster. Like I saw that, I went, this. you know what? Never mind. <laughs> um, and there was another roller coaster that I saw and chickened out because it like that the first hill is not like an incline, it is like you are literally like straight vertically going going up. No incline. It's just straight up. And I'm like, Mm-mm. can't do that one either. Um It's hard for me to say if I would prefer Disney's over Universal's because they're both. I like them both for different. Well, you also didn't ride the the half of them. I didn't ride the. I didn't get to ride the ones that, like I said, I really wanted to ride the Hulk, but you know, we ran out of time. Um, You were there for. Never mind. You know what? Never mind. I'm not gonna do this. I'm not gonna do this. Um, All right. I, I think one of the things that drives me not crazy um because it, certainly magic kingdom is a place that is definitely meant, meant for kids mm-hmm. um but that doesn't mean that i personally want to go on all the kiddie style attractions mm-hmm. and everything and a lot of the frustrating part for me about ip and stuff is that it's never the ip that i enjoy it's always the the stuff that is very very kid friendly and mm-hmm. you know i just get bored with it at right. some point um what would you say the uh the the ratio of that is over at the at the universal parks i think honestly the you would enjoy it more at universal okay i, I didn't see like there are definitely kitty rides um i mean the whole dr seuss area specifically yeah. <laughs> but you would expect that in the dr seuss area sure. um the even the toon lagoon area like there was a ride there if had it not been a water ride i probably would have ridden it but i did not want to ride a water ride when i'm dealing with 158th graders who all by the way rode every water ride they could find um and there's a lot there there's a lot of water rides at universal <laughs> um you know but even the toon lagoon area had like at least one ride that i think um would be you know a little bit more thrilling than you would probably expect not as kitty as i would as i would say um so for those of us or though no those of us not not me though those who the this would apply um having a family with young kids and everything mm-hmm. obviously i think disney would still take the cake uh like yeah if you had to pick one or the other you would pick Disney. but yeah. if you had the the time and you know the a couple of extra shekels to to go over to, mm-hmm. to universal mm-hmm. and you had young kids would you say that's a good idea i probably would only do like one park um not i wouldn't probably if i had like young kids i probably wouldn't do both um just because i feel like that would be a waste of money because there's definitely rides that they can't ride (laughs) um but if you had like i said we took eighth graders so if you had like that you know tween teen age group then i think that they would definitely get enjoyment out of more enjoyment out of universal than a younger kid would yeah i'm when i'm saying kids i'm i'm I figured that the teen and tween type stuff would, would be more. Yeah. Annoying. The younger kids um, you can find, you can definitely find things for them, but 
I don't. Th- I think Disney would be your best bet for the younger kids. Okay, but once you graduate to middle school and high school, yeah, like- then then Universal is definitely something that you should you should definitely check out, especially. And you know, these kids don't care. Like these kids don't know anything about being in black. They nothing. These they they know nothing. Okay, did that stop them from writing the right? No, no. They, so they what were you're saying there. is intellectual properties <laughs> don't matter. If they the don't room. care. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Guess what? Teenagers could care less. <laughs> they just want fun rides. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> I could just be an emoji. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> going as a day guest, as you mm-hmm. as you did. Um, I don't think that this is something that you would have, uh, been able to experience, but it may have been something that you noticed while you were there. Mm -hmm. Disney is almost famous for its various transportation options to and fro, uh, the resort and the parks, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, What kind of, I I think they have like a canal system, but what kind of transportation are are we talking about? Again, unfortunately, because of why we were there and when we were there and all of that, I didn't, you know, the, the transportation options are not something that I really got to to see. Sure. Like I said, we can walk between the two parks. Um, we did have a special walkway, but even on a normal day, I believe you can walk between well, the two. The parks. way that the Universal does it uh, is that it's the two major theme parks. Mm-hmm. They got the other volcano bay. It's off to the to mm-hmm. the side, and then Epic Universe is even more off to the side. By the way, yeah, way down the road. Um, <laughs> but it's it's set up so that it's like theme park, theme park, city walk in the middle, and then the parking yeah. lot is uh, is on the other side. So I was presuming that you had to like go. I, like I don't know where their buses from their. I'm assuming that there's buses from their resorts to the, to the parks. I don't know where they get dropped off. Cause I never see it. So I wasn't sure how draw if you could see how close he got to the bus. So we actually entered from the, from the back, like the employee area. Um, so I have no clue. <laughs> wow. Talk about something Disney would ever do. Like we, know. we came in from like backstage. Yeah, um, that's so Hey, kids going yeah. through the utilidors. Yeah. Um, so I, I unfortunately can't really speak to that. Um, I just know that as far as getting between the two parks, you can walk and then you also have the, um, the train. Um, for oh, the there's a train. Exit. Yeah. It connects the Harry it's, and it fits in with the whole Harry Potter theme. Cause that's where the train is. It's in the Harry Potter areas okay. of both parks, but um, that's a transportation option as well to get from you know between the two main parts um but well, other than that clever. i don't know i like i i'm not a, a fan of harry potter at all but um i will say that's clever that they used a train like that and the train a- the train's a big deal in the books yeah I, um I, I could gather that from the trailers for the movies that i never watched yeah so it's a big deal and they incorporated that as a transportation between the two parts which i thought that's, yeah that is pretty awesome that's <laughs> you 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 did something right um that's something that disney hasn't been able to do ever no no not even over at disneyland where you could ostensibly do something like you know galaxy's edge off to one side and then connect it into the back yeah or something like that which I is do what know I it, thought, by the way i thought I that's what they were do gonna do know well, I know at um, Disneyland, the monorail is not like it's almost like a ride in itself because yeah, it's it goes between over. yeah, it goes between downtown Disney and Disneyland Park, but it drops you off in Tomorrowland, so yeah. you have to have a park ticket to ride the monorail. Right. Yeah, it's their people mover. Is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay, so I'll get off transportation. We've talked about at least one resort over there, and I've mm-hmm. checked out rates when we had another hurricane pending, uh, but also like on the side every now and then I, I take a look yeah. at local things. 
Uh, and like, I would say that their resorts are, um, from what we've experienced, they are on par with Disney and yeah. they are priced better than Disney on a cash basis. Anyway. Yeah. They don't have a vacation club thing, but, uh, no. they are, um, they are pretty affordable, uh, over there. Right. Now, there's also the, uh, the, whatever there is it express pass max pass. What, yeah. I think that's what it's called. Okay. So that comes included with their version of a deluxe resort or it may just be yeah. called a, a deluxe resort. Uh, so, it also came included with my thing as a chaperone. So, okay. So I got to experience that. <laughs> Well, how would you say it is compared to say what? Oh my God! Are- Disney needs to take some lessons. Disney needs to take some lessons. Okay. Um, and they run it like Disney used to when Disney had the Fast Pass when it was free and all of that. That's exactly how this is run. Um, so you're not stopping the standby line and letting like you know everybody go through and then letting like two people in the standby and then, you know, more people from the express. Like they're actually keeping it. Now, granted also the only people on this particular trip that were allowed to use the express line were as chaperones, but still you had several schools there and the schools all had multiple chaperones and we were all using that express line. So. Okay. Um, All right. So. I get what what was it called? It was Express Pass. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Um, let me see if I so can. you you would pick that over Genie Plus. Uh, oh so. God, yes. Okay. I mean, normally it's a paid thing, but if they run it like they if they normally run it like they did for Grad Venture, then heck yeah, I'd I'd do theirs over Genie Plus. Okay, well, theirs can also be more expensive, from what I understand. Um, anybody who's a universal expert, I, I know you guys are rolling your eyes at us now, but <laughs> whatever. This is kind of like me. Never mind. I'm not going to make that comparison. Who knows if my mom will watch this one <laughs> or something. Um, okay. So, which of the two theme parks then would have been your favorite? Um, a tough one because they were both pretty cool. Um, I would probably go with Islands of Adventure. Um, there was a little bit, there was more to do at Islands. Um, but again, they were both pretty cool parks. Okay. So, um, come on, gun to your head. You had to pick one. I'm not holding a gun to your head. I, what a just loaded expression. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Not happy, but anyway, uh, so, um, all right. Harry Potter. Let's, let's do it. It's split between two play, two theme parks mm-hmm. and you have to take a train to get to the other side of it. Mm-hmm. How many attractions are at each park? And like, does your day feel incomplete if you don't have whatever their park hopper equivalent is? I believe that I want to say, t- oh, I don't know. Hold on. Um, I'm actually having to look this up because I don't know exactly how many. I didn't see a lot of the um, Diagon Alley side, which is the side that's at Universal Studios. Which I think has two rides. It does, uh, I think, or it has one. Does it only have one ride there? Um, I don't know. I'm asking you. I, I, I'm looking. I'm looking. Um, I did, however, um, go through and spend some time in the Hogsmeade area, which was so cool. Um, yeah. So that one has. There's three rides over at the Islands of Adventure side, the Hogsmeade side, and I rode two of them. And then there's one Harry Potter ride over at the Diagon Alley or the Universal Studios side. Okay. Um, you you said you didn't ride that one? No, I didn't ride that one. 
Um, and I rode two of the three that are over at Islands of Adventure. Okay. Um, better or on par or worse than Galaxy's Edge? That's a tough one. Um, one of them I would put like I would. I mean, worse. It was definitely more. I would put. The first one I rode kind of in between. Actually, I would put, put Flight well, of the Hippogriff. I just, I just meant the land as a whole. Oh. That, was, that was the answer to Harry Potter World was Galaxy's Edge, it's right? Better. So, it's better. It's better than, than Galaxy's Edge. That could also be me being a big Harry Potter fan talking. It's not like you hated Star Wars. Though. I don't I mean, hate Star Wars, but I'm a, I'm a much bigger Harry Potter fan than I am a Star Wars fan. Um, but I mean, it was really cool to like go in and like when you walk into the Hogsmeade area, it looks like you're in winter, like everything is like snow covered and you're like in this bustling, like, you know, little town area. And it's just it. They did really, really well with with the theming there. Okay. Um. What about and, um what about Merle Haggard's roller coaster? <laughs> Haggard's roller coaster is probably my favorite ride that's there. Okay. All right. That that one was an amazing ride. How would you compare it to Tron? Much better than Tron. First of all, it's longer than two seconds. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Second, um it there's more to it. Like you're, you know, you're in like a motorbike or a sidecar. I was on the motorbike part. Um, and you're going extremely fast. I don't know how fast, but that was probably one of the fastest roller coasters I've been on. Um, and it, it does like, it has like an Everest like part where it, like you go up and like, it looks like the track has run out and then you go backwards um, but you go backwards for a lot longer than you do on Everest. Like I was beginning to think that the rest of the ride was going to be backwards. Um, and then it has a part where you stop and I thought we were going to go forward <laughs> like you do on Everest, but nope, we dropped straight down. <laughs> like it just, it's like the floor gave out. Okay. And you just drop like you do on Tower of Terror. Well, that's terrifying. Okay. <laughs> that well, was again. fun. <laughs> Won't be getting uh, <laughs> and gummies uh, before that. <laughs> um, all right, you have been a Disney fan like my whole life. Yeah, yeah, basically. Right? <laughs> would you, if you were not living in Orlando, would you make a dedicated Universal trip, foregoing entirely Disney World? I may do it once um i don't know if i would do a dedicated universal trip often okay but um i mean it was nice to see something new to be you know to go to one of these theme parks that's you know been here and we haven't gone to um and to experience something different but Disney is still to me for all of the issues <laughs> that we have with Disney well, right now. <laughs> take off the rose colored glasses here. Um, I mean, for we, all the issues that we still have with Disney, I still think that overall, when you're taking into account everything that's at Disney, when you're taking into Disney World as a whole, it's you're gonna have you're gonna get more there than you are at universal but if you are someone who really wants to do a lot of like you know thrill seeking rides and things like that then yeah universals okay the, where you need to go now when epic universe opens talk to me then because that could change the game fair enough and perhaps we will perhaps yeah. we will <laughs> um certainly i've got a couple of rides that i'm interested in uh, mm -hmm. And we'll see if uh, I get dragged over to Universal Studios and all of that uh, after all of this time. I'm almost 40. It's almost time for me to go. 
I think. I think you would have a lot of fun, honestly. Well, that's good. That's good. All right. Let's get into some news, shall we? Cool. Cool. Um, this is a headline from NBC News. Uh, Epcot is my coffee shop. The rise of remote work at Disney World. Mm-hmm. Yep. Story to sum it all up, it's just a whole bunch of people who bring their laptops with them and do like the bullshit sign on thing and put yourself away uh, on Microsoft <laughs> Teams uh, uh-huh. and uh, respond to a couple of emails and then they go ride Spaceship Earth. Or at least that's how I'm reading into this. Uh, and I think the rise of, of remote work is interesting yeah. because there are certainly jobs that you do not need to be in an office for. I think yeah. that there's some that you definitely do because I think the, especially like something like service, like customer service, mm-hmm. I think collaboration and commiseration is, uh, is a better environment. Uh, mm-hmm. But there's certainly plenty of other uh, jobs that you can do remote. Uh, and I uh, kind of appreciate the companies are allowing remote work, mm-hmm. right? Um, also, um, very clearly, I have a love of Disney World. Mm-hmm. And I certainly enjoy still, even though I do nothing but bitch and moan on this podcast about it, <laughs> um, I still do enjoy going to the parks genuinely. Um, yeah. And, you know, we genuinely are trying to find new and different ways that we can have fun uh, at the parks and uh, increase our enjoyment. And it's part of the reason why we mm-hmm. moved here. It was part of the appeal. Yeah. Um, all of that is to say, fuck these people, get them the fuck out of these theme parks. Go away, go to your house and actually sign on to Microsoft teams for fuck's sake, do some actual work. And you know what? Disney adults like, I get it. I totally understand why you would want to, but part of life is not fucking ha- getting everything that you want. So no, I don't think you should be remote working at Epcot. N- it, nothing else. It's putting a strain on security because they have to scan through your laptop. That looks like a fucking bomb under one of those x-ray machines. You know, it just, no, no, these people are the worst. And you know what? I, I hope Disney bans laptops. And 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 does something about the Wi-Fi uh, inside those parks so that you can't connect like that to a, to a laptop. I would love for them to be able to ban these people um, because I think that would cut down on uh, just a number of people in the parks uh, that are getting in my way, and B, it would cut down uh, on the number of people who have a real job and have to sign on every now and then, but really their their passion is to be an in-park blogger. The ones with the goddamn selfie sticks and everything. Mm -hmm. (sighs) Get them out. Fuck these people. Amanda, do you have any thoughts? I, I think it's like every once in a while, you know, going out to a park or a resort like that is fine. Give you a change of scenery, especially if you are like legit working at home every day. Yeah, I would probably go a little crazy and want to have a change of scenery myself. Completely um, understand that. Also, I'm getting to the point in my in my age, I guess, where I'm like, a vacation needs to be a place to unwind and disconnect. And so, oh, Disney's who's... never been that. I don't know why you're. <laughs> well, so my point is, actually, it has been. It has been a place where you can disconnect. That's really? Because every Disney vacation I took was not that. <laughs> I think part of the appeal is that you are disconnecting from reality in particular. But yeah, it, it, well, in that, but okay. I, in in that sense, yes. But also with the way technology is today, even on vacation, you're not really disconnecting anymore. Sure. I think that we should, though. We uh, should. I think that, and because of that... Um, I think that, you know, not remote work in general, it shouldn't be banned or any of that kind of stuff. Cause like I said, I think that there's a lot of benefits to it for, for the right type of person. Um, but I don't think the right type of person decides to pack up their shit and go to a theme park in the middle of the fucking day. I just don't like, I, I can't 
understand how you can concentrate and actually get the work done. Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't see how you're concentrating. And so to me, it's just a a way to kind of rip off your employer. And it's also a a way, but by the way, to maybe fill up a spot for somebody who is, you know, trying to um, ride their first ride or you know, I keep saying Epcot because that's the, really the place to do it i I feel uh but also over at hollywood studios you can do that kind of over at baseline i guess yeah and i suppose you could try to do it at magic kingdom with one of those quick service locations but i don't see that really working out like at all no um especially if you are genuinely going to try to do some work while you're sitting there like if if that's the case and yeah by the way I'm not talking about like actual Disney employees going into the theme park to do do their work. That's your workplace. I'm mm-hmm. not judging you people like that. I am talking about somebody who works for one of these Fortune 500 companies who you know, bitches and moans and never wants to go back into the office. And the reason why is because you want to go fucking ride the land boat ride on, instead of doing your actual job. I mean, if you're looking at it that way, then yeah, I definitely see your point. I I get why people want to indulge in Disney to the degree that some people, you know, extreme uh, sides do. I absolutely, Mm -hmm. it's the same sort of like reason why some people become an alcoholic or a drug addict or something like that. And it's akin to that because it releases certain chemicals in your brain. Mm-hmm. at that point but i i like th- this is one that like I-, I just can't get behind i can get behind a lot of things for personal enjoyment and personal enrichment and so on and so forth and this is just one that like i for so many reasons because it affects other people i don't think that this is a good thing i mean yeah i can i can understand understand your reasoning there like it, you're right. It does take up a reservation from someone else who is mm-hmm. legit wanting to actually go to the park to go to the park. Um, you know, it does take up seating space that, especially in Epcot, is desperately needed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, I get it from during those, those festivals in particular. Oh God, yes, yes. But. I also, though, would, you know, I have gone over to, I didn't go to a park, but I went to a resort and took a book with me and just kind of hung out in the resort and read for a little bit. Um, it was nice to to do that. Um, I kind of want to do that at Epcot, but also it's a book that I could put away and go ride a ride. <laughs> you know, I'm not on the clock at that point. I think maybe the solution genuinely is like no device bigger than, than a phone, like no tablets like that. That would be the, and then definitely no, no laptops, no, laptops. you know, any of that, that stuff. Um, that would be the only way that you could really do that. And then there are some legitimate travel industry people who make genuine salaries off of reviewing and, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You know what? Maybe they you can get apply for a waiver at that point. But like this is this whole shtick of you know I'm going to do everything that I ever want. No, I, uh, this is no, 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 no. And I look, I I work in the area. I I genuinely am down there. I, I don't know you once are. a week or so. Yeah, and it, it, at, if not at more. a minimum. And like I I could turn left instead of turning right to to go to the job sites and such i don't though i don't even like go to to get lunch uh, or anything at the parks or at disney springs or anything like that when i'm working in that area so yeah. like this is not me being uh hypocritical this is not me being um i mean i obviously i'm being very judgmental uh about this but it's coming from a place of like genuine knowledge at this point yeah. i have said opportunity you know, and it's not like everybody has the opportunity to rob a bank. No, that's not what I'm talking about. You know, I have a very specific set of circumstances that that apply to me. I choose not to for these reasons, and you should do the same. 
Uh, okay. <sighs> I mean, no. I mean, you know, I, get I don't off like my people. lawn. Sorry. <laughs> Again, I see where you're coming from. I don't see it stopping though, because I don't see Disney banning things. In fact, I feel like Epcot just made it easier. Because they added outlets to the new seating area. This is a, a perfect lesson uh, in unintended con- consequences. Where mm-hmm. you mean to do something nice for people so they can charge their phones. Because uh, you force them to use the damn thing all day while you're in the park while on the app mm-hmm. and the Genie Plus and the whatnot. And why do I sound like mm-hmm. I'm 75? Um, but, like, yeah, it, it's turned into this instead. And this is just... Ugh, it. it it really does bum me out. Uh, like, uh. I am curious though, like how many, like what, like the percentage of people that actually are working it, from Disney. But it has to be like a, a big enough figure that it would get reported on. If it was, you know, two random people, and that's it, nobody would notice and nobody would care. But like, it's got to be a sizable enough people that like half the uh, the tables over at Connections or something are taken up i mean maybe but we've also seen small groups get you know their voice you know whoever makes the loudest noise usually so i i don't know that these people because i i don't recall seeing people i don't recall seeing people there you know that many people we also go on the weekends though we don't go during the week week weekdays and Part of the reason, and I, that's another reason why I can cannot confirm the existence. I've seen pe- plenty of people with laptops, though, uh, you know, at the parks and the resorts. Uh, mm-hmm. I think, anim- or uh, not Animal Kingdom, um, Fort Wilderness. Well, the resorts I feel are different because, like, I mean, it's a resort, yeah. <laughs> it's a hotel. Yeah. <laughs> you're not really in it, you know. You're not taking up a reservation. You're not, yeah, you know, at a. Th- but when you're at a theme park, you paid yeah. money. To, to be there, you, you yeah. paying out of pocket, like I, I, it's just getting worse and worse at this point. Um, let's get to our uh, Jesus Christ, what were they thinking? Uh, headline uh, cool. here: um, Disney World princesses armed to protect themselves from guests. Is this our favorite? site that did this it is and it's also the same author three weeks in a row of course it is i think this is the only author that does these types of no it's not it's not it's just that they're the best at it they're the best at being the worst person on the planet Hmm. that's uh, i just Uh. so apparently i just saw it (laughs) apparently um it is getting more difficult for Disney entertainment cast members uh, to handle some of the unruly guests, according to this article uh, Mm -hmm. and, and do so while staying in character. Um, Mm -hmm. So according to this article, they have a emergency signal or a word to, to alert uh, an attendant or an assistant. Um. And the princesses themselves get more training than the American police force. That, <laughs> that is a quote. <laughs> now, listen. Uh, it's also a quote from... It's Reddit. It's from Reddit. Reddit. <laughs> you know. So, here's my thing. Okay? Like, I, I could stand to reason why... Disney might give somebody like that a self defense course to make sure that they're yeah. protected. That I can understand. Yeah. I I what Disney princesses get more training than the American police force? <sighs> like what is fucking Elsa uh, learning jujitsu in her downtime? <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't be out of character for Elsa, I don't think. Okay, well then, let's pick a different one, shall we? Um, who's kind of helpless? Uh, let's Cinderella. go. Cinderella. 
you know, Snow let's, go with, let's go with Sleeping Beauty. We're not going to go with Snow White okay. because, you know, whenever that five years from now, when that movie gets reshot 12 times and finally comes out, you know, uh, never mind. We won't get it. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, let's 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 put Sleeping Beauty uh, in that position. What do you think? <laughs> <sighs> I mean, th- yeah, this I is, can't. This is the absolute most ridiculous thing ever for this person to continue to do. Like this, this person thinks it's their personal. Like what's on Reddit is not the news, you guys. Like people, no. people's like unfiltered, uh, you know, fucking vomit bile that that comes out on the internet. It's not newsworthy. It's not good to aggregate this a because all all you're doing is well they're making money who am i kidding i clicked on the mm-hmm. article i did yeah but so the, you know they they won at this point um but also you're just you're making the experience worse i think for a lot of people because yeah there are plenty of even seasoned disney veterans who go to these websites and like buy into whatever the hell it is that they're saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so here's some forty just... seven year old schlep uh is gonna think, oh God, if I put my hand in the wrong spot uh around Bell, all of a sudden she's gonna break out a Glock and uh, shoot me in the rib cage. Like that like that's what they're making it sound like. Yeah. I yeah. I don't I just I don't see it. I don't see Snow White whipping out a police baton and smacking somebody. Although that would be funny to see. Yeah. I. And let's be real. You cannot give uh, the, the actress who plays uh, the, the friend of, excuse me, Jasmine. Uh, you, you can't give her like any sort of vest attire or, you know, because no. that would be culturally inappropriate. Oh my God. <sighs> Anywho, Amanda. Yes. We are on social media, are we not? We are. We are. Then where might we be found on social media? You can find us on Facebook and that website formerly known as Twitter at Cynical Disney. Find us everywhere else. So that's Instagram, Threads, TikTok, Pinterest. I think I covered them all at Cynics on Disney. Alrighty. And this podcast, of course, is brought to you by NotClub33.com. Make sure that you check out NotClub33.com for all of the latest and greatest updates, including but not limited to the NotCast. Uh, just so we're all on the same page here, we are going to get a few more in the can here, but we are rapidly approaching the summertime, which means that we will be taking some time off here and there. So there's going to be fewer NotCasts coming out in the summertime, but hopefully, Hopefully, uh, Amanda can learn how to do some video editing or something like that so I can come up with some batshit crazy stuff and then she can make sure that it doesn't seem so batshit crazy. (laughs) Maybe we'll throw a couple of And I can post more to Instagram and TikTok. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. We're going to hopefully figure all that out. Anywho, the point point being is hopefully we're going to be able to contribute a little bit of different content uh, in the summertime in lieu of the NotCast. But until then, check back every Friday at 4 p.m. Magic Kingdom time. That is East Coast time for all of you California folk. One more thing before we get out of here. We are on YouTube now. So I need you to hit like, do the -hmm. the two thumbs up thing. Uh, I need you to also hit subscribe. Uh, and leave a comment uh, on YouTube. Also, uh, when we're uh, on whatever podcast platform that you are listening to us on, uh, make sure that you give us a five-star rating a re- and write us a review uh, and that you're subscribed on Apple, Google, Spotify, wherever you would mm-hmm. uh, listen to podcasts. Make sure that you are doing all of that on those platforms. Guys, until next time, have yourselves a magical Magical fucking day.